Mom? Mom? Mom, it's only me. Mom? Will you open the door, please? What's the point? You're moving out in a bit. Mother, open the door. Locked and bolted, front and back. It's freezing out here. Well, good training for life in a cardboard box, then. You've barricaded yourself, then. Hmm. If necessary. I'm a sitting tenant. Tenants pay rent. Tenants have contracts. My dad would go ape if he found out you were anywhere near place. You know, some sons would stand shoulder to shoulder with the mothers. Giving the letting agent what for? It's my dad's house. He can do what he wants with it. You'd have made a good errand boy for Hitler. Oh, he's freezing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Very good, very good. You know what? You're going to have to come out eventually. So I've got your smokes. And here's some I prepared earlier. Oh. Hey, back. Right back. Oh, cheers. Not embarrassing at all. Nice one, cheers. You've had it too easy, that's your trouble, yellow belly. I'm all right, Jack. She's doing my head in. You know, when I were breastfeeding you in our mel, that poor little mite couldn't get a look in. You used to drink me dry, guzzling away. <laughs> Betty. <laughs> you know all these mad words that are in your head? Do you always have to say them out loud? A yes, man, who'd see his own mother out on the street. Oh, get a job. Rent a flat. Going on? Our new tenant's moving in. She won't shift. My husband, currently lodging it in Spain, is kicking us out like paupers. Ex-husband. She locks herself in house. I'd admit defeat if I were you, Teresa. And if I were you, I'd go for a face, head and body transplant. You're wasting your time, love. Come on. What am I supposed to do? Short of kicking the door down, love, I've no idea. I'm sorry. Why don't you come with us, eh? Have a nice hot drink. Can't. Gonna stay on mentalist watch. <laughs> Talk her down. Like SAS, what's in it for her if she unbolts the door? Diddly. So then dangle a couple of carrots? Andrew could will do it. It's oh, cost me a fortune already. Oh, well, Darrell, smash your window then. You'll think of something. Oh, cheers. I don't know what Jerry saw in her in the first place. Oh, I quite like redheads myself. <laughs> That's <laughs> fighting talk. <laughs> 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 Not nagging, but um, how long will it be? Bespoke always takes longer. Nearly there now. Right. Good. <laughs> oh, poor Daryl. He doesn't deserve that. Stop feeling guilty. You're not running a youth hostel. Well, would you mind telling Graham that? Because he's round here more than ever. Huh. We never get the place to ourselves. This is a rarity, all right. I'd whisk you off to bed this minute, only I've got disappointed at Weatherfield not nagging me about a kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> Mom! What are you doing? I can't see you! Mom! Now. Hiya. Uh, bit of a situation, but don't worry, I'm across it. I am very across it. Sorry, my mum, she's just, er, uh, emotional. Right, oh, I know the feeling. It's turned off. Yeah, thought you'd be well in by now. We've got ourselves one loony chum squatter. And whose fault is that? What? Oh, everything you touch, it turns to... Oh, I might have known this would be my fault. This is some global warming. Who's this? 
Son of Lonely Tunes. Yeah. Well, let's just kick it in. Oh, and have no front door. Got to shame with it. Go on, son. I'm with you in spirit. No, don't. Don't, please. Please, 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 please. Mum! Will you just come outside, please? Can you not hear desperation in my voice? We've got a contract. We've got terms and conditions. This is not the face of a nappy woman. I'm sorry. Don't sweat it, man. Look, just give us a little bit more time. I'll get her out. You've got an hour. Oh, thank you. If she's not out by one o'clock, I'm unleashing the beast. I'm having a total matter. What? Hey, what's the rush? My mum's refusing to move out so the new people can't move in. And they're hard knocks, son. Either the front door, my head, or both are going to get kicked in. What's the money for? My so called mother. What? Hey, what can I do to help? Say something nice at my funeral. Well, look, your accommodation problem is a no brainer. What? Just trust me, you'll be fine. Whatever. I'm going to have to go. And another 20 when you open door, and another 50 when you come out. Yeah. Oh, cheers. Oh, uh, well, you're freezing to death, won't help anyone. I thought this would swing it. Ah, uh, Gary will swing it, I'm telling you. You heard your mother. Look, right, I'll get her out, even if I have to drag her by her hair. That's not a bad idea, that. Give your crutch. No, no, whoa, whoa! Oh. Good lad! Oh, good lad! Oh. Be strong, son. What have you done? You mad cow. Sticks and stones. You've got to search for the hero inside yourself. Search for the secrets inside. Watch where you put your hands, you filthy beggar. Search for the hero inside yourself until you find the key to your life. Never mind the key to your life. Where's the key to Mel's cuffs? We'll have to do it the hard way. To pop my chainsaw, yeah? It's in the transit. Mum! Key! There wasn't one. <gasps> Fumigating. That palace is spotless. Uh, the grease on that. <laughs> you are lucky I can't knock you into next uh, week. Mum, shut your face. I dread to think what your bathroom's like. Eddie, phone Kim and Aggie. Oh. Talk about fighting fair. I've got another door on me arm. And I've got a front door with a big hole in it. Oh. See the new neighbours of Landy? <laughs> <laughs> Make a poor woman homeless. You'll never get a wink of sleep in that house. Oh, Mom. no way, poor Dazza. Mum, get off me! I'm sure they'll find a bed for you at the funny farm, especially if you tip up looking like that. Get off me, <laughs> Judas! Will you give over? A minute white coats will be here in a minute. Come on. Move. <laughs> 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 What's going on? You heard the lady. And we're back on the front line in half an hour. I can't believe it. Van. Oh, no way am I living next door to those scumbags. Thank you, Phone the landlord, tell him we've changed our minds. We've got to live here now, we signed a contract. Yeah, like that means anything to you people. What do you mean, you people? Don't talk to my dad like that, alright? You signed a contract with us. You only did half a job. We could have built the Taj Mahal in the time we spent in Hang your kitchen. Hang on a minute, don't tell me these are the yeah. people. 
Refused to pay me bill, swiped all me gear. Well, I've got news for you. This is a decent street. Decent people live here. So put your scummy gear back in your scummy van and get out of here! You're only doing this deliberately just to wind us up. What? Do lay one finger on him and the cops be here like a shot? She's right. Best we all just calm down. Why don't I put the kettle on? Where are you going now? Casualty. To get rid of these. Here. You, shut your mouth! Shut yours! Shut yours! Does she watch how you talk to my family? You being such upstanding citizens? Ah, you know not about us. We know you ripped out my kitchen. I'll rip some else out in a minute. After breaking and entering my home? Who says? I'll come off it. We know it with you lot. Prove it. Every time the coppers nab you, which is probably twice a day, that's what you say, isn't it? Prove it, prove it. You ripped their kitchen out first. You get inside. Well, he got evicted because of you lot. It wasn't yours. You hadn't paid for it. You threatened my dad. He threatened me mum. That's how all the trouble started when he started shouting the odds, scared the life out of me. Oh, frightening women. You had no intention of paying for it. Your sort never do. I've had enough of this! You are asking for a good kick in there, seriously. Leave it, Gary! They're not worth it. Morton thinks he's going to get any rent out of them. <laughs> well, I'll go have a word with Daryl, see if we can get him shifted. Don't know why I let him move in in the first place. They probably use fake references, cash in hand. They had me fooled. I know the feeling. What's that supposed to mean? Well, you told me there was nothing to worry about. You had it all in hand. Do you want my advice? No. Just stay out of the way. Don't rile them. He's right. You shouldn't stoop to their level. Well, we can't just let them walk all over us. Trust me, mate. They are dog rough. And by dog... I mean, like Rottweiler, Staffy. Well, I can't believe they seem to think that we're in the wrong. Of course they do. Because with them, everything's always somebody else's fault. God knows what it'll do to the house prices. God knows what it'll do to the neighbourhood. And I don't want you saying or doing anything to wind their son up. Looks like a right lunatic. Yeah. David's a bigger loom. That's why this has started in the first place. Mm. You didn't mention that either when you told me what happened. What, what did you expect, Mum? Me just to stand by and watch while they were ripping him off? I stood up to him, all right, and I'd do it again. In a straight fight, my money's on Gary and Len Windass every time. Sorry, mate. <laughs> Jobs eight, good un. Look at us, all our worldly goods and a few black bin bags. You've got your knickknacks and your mementos. I'm 41, Ed. I should have more to show for life than this. Well, I'm not the materialistic type. It's a good job, isn't it, cos we've got now. And I am materialistic. I want a nice new settee and a whacking plezzy screen TV. Oh, don't get on there, can we? Mate? This is meant to be a new start. Oh, yeah, fat chance of that. Moving next door to people that hate us. Normally it takes at least a week before that happens. It's not a joking matter, Gary. I can't believe you've pulled a stunt like this. Are you completely stupid? Don't look at me. Uh, I'll be uh, off now. I'll uh, leave you three to settle in. Yeah. I wanted to show that weedy little git who threatened you that we mean business, yeah? Great. So we're labelled from day one. I don't know whether I should bother unpacking this lock. Sounds like we might be moving on again at this rate. Oh, well, love, we're not moving for another year minimum, I promise. Oh, no. Look. Did you pack this box? I told you to be careful. Look, it's broken. It's only a tile. It's not the point. I was going to put it up outside. It's a nameplate for a flat in I am onto. You can't put it up outside a semi in Weatherfield. It was an apartment. I loved it. I know you did, love. We should never have come back to England. I had no choice. We've had nothing but bad luck since we've come back. Well, things are looking up now, love, I promise. You two, carry on unpacking.
favourite people at the minute. You're dead right. They've got a vendetta against me, and thanks to you, they're living next door. Uh, I've told you it's got nothing to do with me, mate. Yeah, well, if I were you, I'd just make sure your CCTV was switched on. You cheeky little swine. Do you sell glue? Mm -hmm. Oh, for your gaddy, is it? Super glue. I want two tubes, please. Two? Mm. One to clamp his gob shut and the other for this. <laughs> So, settling in all right? Oven's got no door and the door's got no glass. Well, not to do with me. You're the landlord's son. Oh, well, yeah, but... So get it sorted, or else we'll do it ourselves and knock it off the rent. Oh, and there's a patchy damp in the box room. Could cause emphysema if it's not sorted. Well, speak to agent. I hate estate agents. They're all stuck up. Two. What are you doing? Well, I'm not paying for it unless I know it works. Jobs are good and can we go to the pub now? Yeah, go on then. What are you gawping at? Mad, we hardly know each other. I know you're a windass. All oh, right, so that's it. We're written off. Talk about judging a book by its cover. That and the fact that your lad stole my kitchen. Look, we've got a choice. We can carry on brawling in the street, giving each other evils, or me and you can sit down like grown-ups and sort this mess out. At least you got a new kitchen. This is dead smart. I thought you'd come round to apologise. It was your son who started this, you know. He's very scary when he's riled. Then, well, if you paid your bill on time. You've never been late with a phone bill? Yes. Bet BT didn't send round a thug with a great big crowbar in his hand. Look, I don't condone what David did. We were waiting for an insurance payout at the time. I knew there'd be some sob story. My head, he had a fall in Ayamante, Spain. Oh, he's due six grand, but it's taking forever for it to come through. I know we shouldn't have started spending it, but you're Joe. It's a very persuasive salesman. Oh, so it's Joe's fault? Me and you are in the same boat. We didn't know the half of what was going on. And if we had, we'd have sat down and sorted it out over a cup of tea. Speaking of which, that kettle just boiled. Me? Well, I'm not sure about that. You carry the weight of the world on your shoulders. I bet that lad of yours has given you plenty of sleepless nights. One or two. My mother had a saying, lads had drown him at birth. Well, he's calmed down since he met Tina. We've moved five times in the past two years. Really? Mm. So you might not stay around here too long? No, I want to settle down. I wanted to settle down in Ayamante. But that's another story. Well, and, uh, let's get the tea on. We have an apartment. I love to say in the word apartment, the master bedroom had an ensuite, balcony with views over the marina, but that's another story, what meant to be. That's a great pity. Mm. Eddie knows he's cocked up. He's trying to make amends, that's why he ordered that blooming kitchen to get round me. I'm so glad we're having this conversation, aren't you? Well, no harm in being civil, is there? Is that pub at the end of the road any good? It's very nice, yeah. Why don't we go for a drink? Your family and my family. We can knock the lads' heads together. I, I'm not sure that they... About get... half seven. Oh, go on, you know you want to. Oh, I think me and you are going to be big pals. Well, I um, tend to keep myself to myself. You're fussy, like me. Do you know what? I think we've clicked. So listen, I'm going to see you later on. Yeah? Hey kids.
the pub. The mother of that psychopath. Physically touching one of them? She hooked me. I didn't really encourage her. You let her into the house? That's a form of encouragement. Yes, because she said she wanted to sort things out. She was trying to hold out an olive branch. You've been brainwashed. And you did start this whole feud by threatening her. Well, thanks for your support, Mum. I just think that if she wants to put the whole thing behind us, then why shouldn't we? So, you're going to go for a drink with her tonight? Not just me. We all are. Me. I don't want to socialise with them. Look, we've tried things your way and we've tried things David's way, so now we'll try things my way, OK? I can't believe we're doing this. We can't let things just carry on the way they are. No, but we could force them off our street. And you really think that's going to happen? You show any sign of weakness, they walk all over you. It, well, they're here now, so I don't want you saying or doing anything to upset them, OK? Hi. Hi, Anna, over here. Six hours I was down at Casualty. You cut you free, though. The lad in front of me had a cue ball stuck in his gob. Mm. Had to dislocate his jaw to get it out. Mm. Could hear the screams in Burnley. <sighs> See, they've got their feet under the table now, then. Mm. You couldn't stay there forever, Mum. No. I don't know, it's me who got myself into this mess. Take care of yourself, Mum. And keep in touch. Oh, okay. Hey. Me and Gail had a long chat this afternoon, didn't we, Gail? Yes, we did. And we decided that there's been mistakes made on both sides. But neither of us wants the bad feeling to carry on, do we, Gail? No, we don't. So we're going to make a fresh start, wipe the slate clean. So, Eddie, Joe, check out. What? Hey? Eddie, do it, Joe. Now, David. Gary. <sighs> Come on. Shake hands. This is off its head, this is. David! No way, Mum. I'm not shaking his hand. I hate his guts. The feeling's mutual. Look, if you lot want to play happy families, that's fine. You can count me out. We were trying to avoid conflict. Avoid conflict is a bit late for that. Well, suspend it then. None of this was my fault, remember? I shook Eddie's hand. I stood there and I shook his hand. It's David you want to be talking to. Talking is what we're trying to promote. Well, we should have had little flags on us tables and microphones. Yeah, well, the girls are yapping, aren't they? So they're winning. It's not the winning that matters to these people, it's the taking part. Surely it's better to be friends. Actually, I think I'm with David. I'll go and get these handles. Will you be able to fix them? Saw the boy out running this morning. All his hands bandaged up. Must do a bit of boxing. <laughs> That's all we need. Ring craft. Yeah, well, I'm doing a bit of boxing myself if they carry on. Never mind Amnesty International. Middle Street wasn't an alien. You don't know what you're talking about. Of course she was an alien. What would you know? So Granny Weaver was an alien. It was Meryl Streep. I remember the red hair. Red hair? You're on your own, yeah. Anyway, never mind, alien. Get down to that cab firm. Tell them that you don't mind working nights, your licence is clean and you're a people person without being overly chatty. I, I don't mind working nights, though. No, you don't. You just want me out there in the dead of night risking my neck so that you can lie in bed like a starfish. I want a new sweep. It's not right, is that? I'd like an L-shaped one in battered brown leather. <sighs> Have you seen Piccadilly Gardens at three o'clock in the morning? Pimps, button men, old women with carrier bags full of newspapers and tea courses on their heads. You'll fit right in.
Lucky there's a couple of women between us, eh? Bit of diplomacy. Thatcher, what a woman. Look where that got us. I'm with you on that one, old son. Can I tempt you into a pint later? They might want to bury the hatchet. I'm not about to start supping with you. All right, Captain. Take it easy. Boom. It's a gone big, aren't it? Eddie insisted it was Meryl Streep. <laughs> Meryl Streep? In Alien? Yeah. No. <laughs> I know. Yeah, they won't listen, will they? I mean, only complete idiot to think that Meryl Streep starred in Alien. <laughs> Meryl Street. <laughs> all right, all right. Anyway, thanks for lending us this. Eddie dropped ours downstairs. Well, at least he was doing it. He won. It was in his way, so we booted it. Does, um, Gary ever hoover? Incessantly. Makes all the beds, dust, does the ironing. No. No, he's right. You'll hurt my feelings. Least of me worries your feelings. You better hurry up. Should be wanting a tea. What's that? I lent it off next door. When are you fixing ours? There's a new belt. I'll put our len on it. And by the way, it was Sigourney Weaver in Alien. I was right. <laughs> Meryl Streep. You said it were Meryl Streep? Don't come that with me, Edward Windass. Accept it when you're wrong. How did you get on at streetcars? The gaffer wasn't in. The woman said to come back tomorrow to have a word with him. What woman? The brunette who works on the switch. Tarty piece with a chest. Keeps coming on to all the drivers. It's supposed to be a proper little home wrecker. Well, I'm sure you'll resist her and vice versa. There were eight of them stood outside. No jobs on. I said quiet today, is it, lads? No, they said it's always like this. One of them had a copy of the Racing Post out on the bonnet. All the others were gathered round it. Were they now? There's a gambling culture there, apparently. You must think that I was born yesterday. What? <laughs> Straight up. I think Gail Lobo Park Gary didn't keep you awake last night. Well, actually... When he's had a few whales, he waxed great fights of the 70s on the video full volume. Times have been awoke to the thriller in Manila. Yeah, well, I think I'd better be opening up. This is my mum. Audrey. Anna. Eddie. New neighbours. Well, I surmised as much, actually. <laughs> Jungle drum's been beating. Not as loudly as your telly at two o'clock in the morning. Yeah, well, I'll have a word, but I keep a bag of cotton wool balls by your bed just to be out safe, sad. Listen, Audrey, love, if you want in another pair of hands, I'm red up with the old scissors. Hmm? I do. I'm ready. When he runs a comb through, he can look quite dashing. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, would you mind picking that up, please? Well, I'm sorry, love. I've not been down since 93. I didn't. There's a bin there, right? I'll see you both. You well and truly ruined that for me. I only dropped a tab end, woman. It's not my fault it, she's got a rod up her backside. You'll have the toe end of mine up yours if you don't get round to that cab office. Don't come back without a job. Time. It's a non-starter. I don't like cashing out. Well, you're in. That's the main thing. They can't do out without national insurance details. All you've got to do is drag your feet. Talking of which, you're meant to be on disability, not come dancing. I know you worked here. I told you she had it upstairs. I'm a receptionist, not a doctor. We want to register. Right. Oh, well, you'll uh, need to fill in one of these forms. Oh, I'm way ahead of you, girl, love. With Eddie being on the sick, we need to get him fixed up pronto. Could you get him in for a medical next week? What? We need to get things moving. Sorry, my ears are still ringing from last night. What was it you wanted? What I said about the cotton wool bars earlier, you won't be needing them. 